Big time matchup here tonight in week four of the regular season. This game usually would be played sometime in November or maybe early December with a championship berth on the line. It's Wake Forest. It's Cardinal Gibbons. And it is Friday Night Rivals for West Shore Homes presented by Air Experts Heating and Cooling as we welcome you into Gibbons here tonight. What an atmosphere. I'm Patrick Johnson, Jay Sonhalder. I tell you what, when you talk about the Crusaders, the defending state champs, they've probably played the toughest, toughest schedule in the entire country. And then for Wake Forest 3-0, they're just doing Wake Forest Cougar things. Yeah, both these teams, like you said at the beginning, I expect to see them deep in the playoffs and maybe this matchup again. But Wake Forest has come out, looked outstanding on both sides of the ball. And Cardinal Gibbons, when you watch their film, you see talent and you see discipline really stand out. All right, let's take a look at our players to watch. It's the Jay Sunhalter Spotlight. What do you have, Sonny? Well, for Wake Forest, Deshaun Grant has been outstanding this season. We'll see him on offense tonight, out at wide receiver, running back as well. On the defensive side, he's averaging over 10 tackles per game. He can get in the backfield, create havoc, and is also great in pass coverage, flipping his hips over for Cardinal Gibbons. They've got two defensive linemen, Donovan Dozier, number 45. He's committed to Liberty. And then Josh Stone King, number 99. They get in the backfield. They affect the opponent's quarterback. Great in run support as well. Those two guys really get leverage and get off the line quickly, and they've been a big force. Let's look at tonight's keys to the game. Well for Wake Forest, it's all about the running game. That's what they want to do is set the tempo up front, run the ball, and set up the play action pass, and then affecting the game on special teams. Over for Cardinal Gibbons, protecting the football has been the focus this week in practice, and then winning the line of scrimmage on the offense and defensive line. Well, let's throw it over on this gorgeous Friday night to the third member of our team, Alexa Kay, with more on this matchup. Thanks, Patrick. Happy to be back for week three of Friday Night Rivals. And judging by this environment and crowd, we know why this is the top game in this state. And on top of it, in the last five state championships, four of them have been from one of these teams tonight. It's going to be a good one, guys. Cardinal Gibbons is coming off a state championship the past season at Carter Finley, which is only about 200 yards away. And Wake Forest has three state championships under their belt. There's no shortage of talent out here, so stay with us on Friday Night Rivals to see how it goes. We'll be back soon. A big thanks to the United States Marine Corps for today's coin toss. The few, the proud, the Marines. Contact your local recruiter today. Thanks to Sergeant Kalen Whitman being out there, Sergeant Vincent Mathers. U.S. Marine recruiters with the Marine Corps here tonight. And there's Dr. Stephen Wright coming off a state championship. Jubilation. They partied across the street, Carter Finley, and then brought the party back here to campus in December. Well, it was an awesome atmosphere being across the street to win the championship. It was bad weather, and they found a way to come through with a huge victory against Chambers and really did it in dominating fashion and a rainstorm for the first half. And for them to be here on their home field with this atmosphere going against an outstanding Wake Forest club with Reggie Lucas. These are two of the top coaches in the state. And Reggie Lucas has three state championships underneath his reign at Wake Forest. And both these squads look really good leading up to this game. Coach Lucas going for career win number 150 tonight. Time now for the American Military University kickoff. And Wake Forest will take it first after Gibbons won the toss and deferred. And a good return off the kick by Mikey Di Pasquale. Fantastic return. And the AMU kicks off the number one provider of higher education to the U.S. military. You know, Wake Forest talked about special teams this week, getting off to a good start here with field position. Nice return by Di Pasquale. So here we go, probably the game of the week in the state. And a whistle to start things early. There we go. Avon Simmons, the sophomore, completing 53% of his passes. Pulls down, goes down, a sack! early on and it was the young man in the sunny star watch donovan dozier like a bulldozer plowing his way through yeah, he just first step quickness into the backfield and alongside with josh stone king number 99 
Nice job throwing his man to the side and those two creating the pressure on the first play. Dozier's third sack of the year. 13 yard loss. Second and a ways now for Wake. This offensive line up front for the Cougars might be facing their stiffest test of the year. They'll go on the ground. And uh, that is DePasquale, the senior. Came in with just under 200 yards, had 80 yards rushing at a score against Southern Durham earlier in the year. And time, time now to take a look at the air experts heating and cooling starting lineups. Simmons, DePasquale, EJ Norris is someone. And then Nigel Lucas, keep an eye on him. He's the coach's son, getting some uh, D1 looks. Great athlete on both sides. Yeah, offer starting to flow in for Nigel Lucas. Great at the wide receiver position as well as defensive back. The offensive line up front is going to be important for them to get pushed tonight. It's an OL that averages about 6'2 and 250 pounds. And not a whole lot there to go as far as the sledding went there as Stone King met him, the senior. That'll be a fifth tackle for loss for Stone King. Dozier and Stone King, we talked about them. They have some other stars on this defense. And the linebacking core is very strong, led by Blake Raphael. He really gets after the quarterback in the secondary as well. This is a good group in the back end. It's very disciplined and good speed. 25 Peebles is a freshman, so that tells you how good he is to be out there. And we're going to have a punt here on fourth down. It's going to be Tavion Williams and Peebles, the freshman, to return the punt. It'll bounce and takes a little bit of a Wake Forest roll. Stops down at the 47-yard line, so that's a punt of 29 yards. So we'll get a look here at the Crusaders offensively. Coach Wright huddling them up. Whit Neubauer is their quarterback. He's a junior. Connor Clark was back after playing in the last two and starting in the last two state championship games. He is now the backup behind Neubauer. Four receivers set for the Crusaders. They'll come out throwing, and it's complete. Or no, it's not. Bounced at the 45-yard line. Chet Yardley, the junior, who has nine receptions on the year. He's the intended target. Landon Lawrence is a name to keep an eye on. Nick Lemon as well. These receivers are really good. They've got a really good group on the tight end. Brock Chappell, he's a college prospect as well. We'll see him moving around in the formation in line as a tight end. Also split out in the slot. And then up front, a talented left tackle on sophomore Jack Sheehan. Running lineups, Eric experts heating and cooling there. Chapel, by the way, 6'5", 230. Senior. Cannot verify this, but there are some rumors that they call him Sonny 2. <laughs> Is there any truth to that? I haven't heard that one yet. We'll, uh, we'll have to find we'll out. Vet it. We'll vet it. I, my research is extensive on this, as you know. <laughs> Thorough. Second and 10. Tried to go on the ground with Joey Jonski, and the running game has been a real problem. Now, keep in mind, they played... Chambers in the opener rematch of the state title game and then they play one of the top teams in the country as well in uh, Bergen Catholic up in New Jersey here's a look at the Cougars defensively who stands out in this group for you? Well Zane Williams has been great the middle linebacker one of the best in the county Deshaun Grant we highlighted him in the open Nigel Lucas Tavian Williams those two have seven combined interceptions as well as being stay. Packed house here tonight movement up front on the Cougars, and that will bring up a free five for the Crusaders. We'll see what they do after the encroachment call. There's Jackson Briley, who got a little overzealous. 6'4", 210-pound junior. One of the real good guys in high school athletics there, Coach Wright. It'll be third and six. Neubauer, nice ball to the 30-yard line and a little more. They get Chonsky out of the backfield, and it's going to bring up a first down for NCDPS. Go to ncdps.gov slash careers and start your new career. Well, nice job by Neubauer looking down the field and then finding Jonsky as an outlet, sprinting across the middle, pick up the first down, and Jonsky really good hands when he splits out at wide receiver and also catching the ball in the backfield. Gibbons coming off a win, a shutout against Richmond. 
And in that game, Neubauer, 221 yards. He'll go for the end zone here, and it's thrown through the back into double coverage. Good defense there by a talented pair in the secondary, Lucas and then Tavion Williams as they wanted to get it to Landon Lawrence. Now double cover. Excuse me, Nick Lemonson, I'm sorry. And Vance Day coming over as well, but that's the strength of the back end of this defense with Lucas and Williams. They're stride for stride, nowhere to go with that ball. Second down. On the run, nice catch made. 24-yard line. That time they work at the Nick Lemon. His eighth round of the year. He's a six-foot. 180 pound senior. So now third and five here. They're in four down territory. Well, we'll see if Wake Forest decides to bring some pressure. Again, this is only the second start for Neubauer. This defense, three down linemen, four linebackers. So there's different blitzing schemes they can go, come with to bring pressure on the quarterback. Gibbons averaging just under 20 a game, trying to get on the board after a three and out forced by their D. Neubauer with plenty of time. Over the middle, juggled, almost intercepted. But it's going to fall to the turf here. Lucas almost had his fourth pick. Uh, the offensive line held up plenty of time for Neubauer, but the secondary, nowhere to go. I mean, great job in coverage. He looks across the middle as Chapel streaks across. Outstanding leverage. Vance Day comes across, knocks the ball loose. And then Lucas is almost able to pick it up. Chapel with the second most receptions on the team. We will see him factor in this one I'm sure and there's Neubauer pressure on fourth down wrapped up he slings the Cougar defender to the turf heaves towards the end zone and it goes off the hands and falls incomplete Vance Day almost had a pick uh, great pressure by Wake Forest forcing Neubauer out of the pocket I, I don't know how he got away from the pressure he was almost able to make something happen, but Vance Day staying tight and covered. That's Briley who was slung to the turf. We'll check on him when we come back. West Shore home Friday night rivals presented by Air Experts. Heating and cooling, a packed house in West Raleigh. Here's another look at this play. And uh, looks like that the arm of Briley gets trapped under in here after Neubauer, who, who was pretty strong. Uh, tossed him to the turf and almost made a play here, Jim. Well, great effort by Briley. Hopefully he'll be okay. It's tough the way he came down on that right arm. Wake Forest operating here first and ten. Simmons pass complete. That time to Rico Alston out of the backfield. Ryan Ziegler, number 24 from the linebacker position, comes up here and makes the play on the outside. Really good job with team tackling Corbin McDaniel as well. And this is a very physical Cardinal Gibbons defense. But they're always in the right alignment and very fast as well. Only a gain of one, second down and nine, 25 yard line for Wake Forest, who comes in three and zero. Oh. On the ground they'll go. What they want to do, Jay, is work these running backs. Uh, Mikey Deepasquale has been a star in the program for numerous years. I mean, he's a guy college coaches are continuing to track. Offers are coming in, but he's the best running back out of this bunch. And for him, the, the team really needs him tonight to have one of those big explosive games. they got to lean on the offensive line to break some holes, some lanes for Deepa Squally to run through. Deepa Squally, his second assignment of the night. Good game for him. It's going to be third down here. Two receivers to the right as Simmons will Flare it out. Caught. And we'll see how he had enough yardage there. They went to Quay Armston. The junior. Another one of the young backs that we were told we were going to see in this game tonight. They're going to be rotating him in a little more in and out for Wake Forest in this one. 
It's going to be fourth down and short, Jay. What do you think the call will be? Probably what? punt, right? Yeah, in this situation, you're on about a 33-yard line. This is the right call. Go ahead, bring your special teams unit and try to flip the field position. Got the boot away, and it takes a good Wake Forest roll. That'll trickle down to the 22-yard line. It's going to be a 44-yard boot. So a little more than midway through this opening quarter, and Gibbons will come back out. They were moving the ball really well, Jay, then things kind of got bogged up on them right when they got it close to the red zone. Yeah, and Wake Forest defense so physical in their front seven, and their backs were against the wall. They just really toughened up. Reggie Lucas, year in, year out, the defense is always stellar, and they did the job on the last drive, forcing Cardinal Gibbons to get off the field on fourth down, but now with that punt by Williams, Gibbons is going to have a long field to go. 22-yard line is well they, where they will operate from. Johnski, the sophomore, and he gets very little. Jay, they come in averaging just 129 on the ground. Chambers was the one that really stuffed their running game, held them to negative 28 yards that day. Of course, a lot of that was they were getting to the quarterback, Connor Clark, too, but the run game was just unable to get out of neutral in the season opener. Well, Cardinal Gibbons has faced really good competition, but they're trying to get this running game going so they can use the play-action pass. And, I mean, this is another tough test tonight. It's going to be tough to get those yards in between the tackle, which whatever team can control the line of scrimmage is really going to have the upper hand in this game. Slipping one tackle, getting some yards across the 20, and then taken down a late marker. Come sailing in, Zion, uh, Zion Frink, was the one who ended up with the tackle there. And they went to Nick Leonard. You'll see Leonard line up at receiver. You'll see him out of the backfield. And let's see what the flag is all about. Might have gotten a hold on the perimeter with Yardley or a block in the back. That's what it is. So that'll back him up even more. You know, this ball goes out to the outside. The wide receiver's trying to block downfield, putting forth the extra effort. And there it is. Tried to put on the brakes, didn't he? And, and that's what you want is that effort, but you just have to hold up there, especially when it's right in front of the official. So second and 22 from the 10. And nothing doing there as Wake Forest up front has come to play. That's Martez Smith, six foot, 260 pound senior who came in with a tackle and a half for a loss this year. He picks up a full one there. He gets leverage. Double team comes over, he splits it. There's nowhere to go. Good job staying low and getting off the ball. Both these teams don't mind playing a low-scoring game. Gibbons last year did average over 36, but they only managed 12 in the championship game. They only needed one. They pitched a shutout against Chambers in the title game at Carter-Finley last year. And that is a heck of a play there to make the tackle. Again, Martez was in on it. But so was Zane Williams with a lineman draped all over him. The play for these two up front. Smith jumps offsides, then comes back before the ball snap, gets underneath, and Zane Williams, the middle linebacker, 20 tackles on the season. Martez Smith, Reggie Lucas said he's one of the toughest guys he's ever coached. He was really talking about his effort this week, and we had a chance to speak with him and how hard he plays. This is a Wake Forest team that all last season played on the road. Their stadium was being refurbished. So even when they were home, they were playing in somebody else's field a year ago. This is going to be excellent field position for the Cougars. Not a great effort on the punt there from Evan Helfrick. And it'll finally die down at the 44-yard line. We'll grab a break and we'll come back with more right after this.
What an environment here tonight, Sonny. Yeah, this is the best game in the state, and I'd expect both these teams to play well tonight. You knew the fans were going to come out to watch each of these past champions come out and perform. And it's a lot of fun to be here and witness it in person. Three in a row, a few years ago for Wake Forest. And last year, Gibbons capturing their first ever in their proud century plus existence. Here's a throw on first down. Oh, it's bounced up and caught. Wow. What a grab. What concentration for Frank Barrett, the junior. And that delightful bounce and grab takes them into the red zone for Campbell University. Join us for open house on September 17th. And remember, our undergraduate application is free. Campbell University. No, this was a phenomenal throw. And then the hand-eye coordination in the focus of Barrett. The hand in his face falls down. Ball bounces up, is still able to hold on. And this was a huge play for the offense getting down inside the red zone. Simmons with the completion was 5 of 10 last week. And their defeat of a very good Hoggard team at home, 17-7. Simmons rolling here. He's going to keep. Makes a move. Simmons breaks a tackle. Simmons fighting. It's going to be close. Did he get in? The Cougars say he did. They're going to mark him just shy of the goal line. Well, I like the play calling this drive by Wake Forest. You had troubles running the ball, so they're opening up in the passing game. You have the long play on the first one, and then here Simmons is in the shotgun, looks out towards the right. He doesn't like what he sees, and then he shows off his athleticism, takes off, and gets what he could as he inches closer to the goal line. Burdak, the tackler that came along and assisted there, and he and Tyler Yeager really kept him out of the end zone, and that's a big stuff there on second and goal. And who else? Pick number 99, Stone King. Stone King, 6'2", 242. Long arms, look at him here, just throw his man off and then get in the backfield. There's nowhere to run. Stone King, five tackles. Two tackles for loss in a sack last week when they just blew by Richmond County. And I know Richmond County is in a little bit of a transition, but that just doesn't happen. So it's third and goal here. And a nice job again by Stone King. The play to chase down the back. Keep a squally. Cracked down, and it's going to be fourth and goal. Yeah, and Deepa Squale is following his offensive line. And Stone King from the backside hustles down the line of scrimmage to make the play. Now decision time on fourth down. Kick the field goal, or do you go for it here? And for Wake Forest, you know, this is one of those things. Hey, listen, if we don't get they've got to go 99 yards. If we go for it here, we've got confidence our offensive line can get some push to get in the end zone. Peoples was also there defensively for the Crusaders. Here we go. Cougars will... Try to punch it in. Ball pops out, and it'll be on the turf taken by Gibbons. Coughed up by Deshaun Grant. Here's another look. Malachi Gerdak is going to get the ball. But again, the defensive line, that's Stone King getting pressure. There's nowhere to run. And the ball goes free. Wake Forest couldn't get the push up front. Each defense is really winning the battle so far in the ballgame. So the big defensive play, you get the title belt. That was pretty dang on impressive. The defensive line there got the push. There are multiple guys splitting the gaps. And they've done the job. Newbauer, Lemon, wrapped up at the 10. Complete to number two, Nicholas Lemon. Grant there, one of those two-way players for the Cougars. Pick up oh, five yards, so it'll bring up second and five at the 10. Time's going to expire here. So we'll flip ends of the field, and they'll scrimmage from the 11 when we come back. Scoreless through one. West Shore home Friday night rivals presented by Air Experts Heating and Cooling.
Scoreless through one. I'm Patrick Johnson. Jay Sonhalder, the former ECU tight end, is here. Alexa Kay. We'll hear from her here in just a second. Scoreless between 3 0 Wake Forest and 1 and 2 Cardinal Gibbons. We'll start quarter number two. And the Crusaders deep in their own territory. Newbauer, play action. Plenty of time, and he'll complete the pass. 29 yard line. Nice move by Lawrence, and he'll take it out for a NC deep, or rather a myspot.nc.gov first down. Your spot for COVID-19 protection. Nice job by Newbauer, staying in the pocket, being very poised, and throwing an accurate ball to Lawrence as he's going to the outside. Well, with more on Whit Newbauer, here's Alexa. Hey guys, Coach Wright told us earlier this week that they really opened up that quarterback position after their starter got a shot and his non-throwing arm. Whit Neubauer really stepped up and is playing some really good football, Coach said. He's a hard worker and he leads by example. He has great feel in the pocket and has a tremendous arm strength. He also stated that Neubauer is one of the most coachable kids he's ever worked with. Back to you guys. Another first down scamper there. And when you know it on cue, we talk about Newbauer. He comes out so we can get a great shot of him on the sideline. He comes back in now. So this was all planned down to a T. But we saw Aiden Smalls there, a freshman who's got a big future. A talented freshman on the football field as well as the basketball court. And we're going to hear his name coming up here for the next four years. But he's one of the best athletes in the state. And they've got a really deep quarterback here with Clark, yeah, Smalls, do. and Newbauer. Well, we were told we would see Smalls, and it's a hold that Probably he did not need to spring that run, so it'll back up Cardinal Gibbons. The penalties early for the Crusaders, a little surprising. Well, and for them, that's an area they just want to clean up here. And Each offense has had the struggles. Defenses have been superior so far in the ballgame. Newbauer, clean pocket, big heave, has his man. Oh, in and out of his arms. What a toss for Nick Lemon. Had to slow down just a little bit, and that threw him off, I think. So the offensive line protected up front. Now, Wake Forest, they drop into coverage. Only three rushers. Clean pocket. And had the speed down the hash. It just couldn't connect. Had the step two on Nigel Lucas, which is no small feat. couple of title games back-to-back -back seasons Chapel Hill in 2020 Get it, second and long here Newbauer gets rid of it and it's gonna be incomplete and look Newbauer fabulous player smalls world of potential it's not like Connor Clark is not accomplished I mean he last year threw for nearly 2,800 yards and 30 touchdowns and it is careers thrown for over 4,500 yards. He started the state championship game the last two years. It's right now, Newbauer is playing better football. Uh, he's one of the leaders of the team. He's a championship quarterback. We talked about how deep the quarterback room is. I mean, you've got three guys that could start anywhere <laughs> else in the yeah, state, really. And be, you know, all stars. But for Newbauer, he's come in here. He's really done a nice job moving in and out of the pocket. He's very athletic. He can throw on the run. Ball tucked just inside the 31. Snap back by Brady Taylor, the junior. Neubauer on the run, and a catch, and Chapel got lit up as soon as he caught the football. Nice hit laid on him there by Grant, who plays an outside linebacker. Grant, in any other defense, would probably be a guy in the secondary. He's on the outside there, kind of that rover back, but or backer. But uh, he will lay a stick on it. He can do it all. We'll see him rush tonight, dropping back in coverage, having over 10 tackles per game. He's all over the field. So they're going to punt. And we'll see here if uh, Helfrich can have a better effort. Or rather, Monty have a better effort. And Monty. 37 yard average coming in on 14 punts. Much better kick. Nice catch and return of five by uh, Mikey Dispasquale. We'll take a timeout with nine and a half remaining here. 
And it'll be Cougar football when we come back. Don't you dare go away. Splendid 77 degree night, perfect conditions, especially for early September for Friday night football, our Friday night rivals, West Shore home. Of course, it is presented by Air Experts Heating and Cooling. Movement up front, that's another penalty on the Crusader. A nice job by Simmons with the hard count. Picking up hidden yardage. So from the 39, they'll operate first and five. Sunny, a far cry from the weather. Of course, in December, it's cold, but they had that sweeping rainstorm come through when Gibbons was in the title game against uh, Chambers. I was on the sideline, and so I had prepped. I had the right shoes, had the umbrella, but, I mean, it was coming down hard. And uh, a carry. Simmons calls his own number. Pick up a three-third short coming up. You were at the game. You'd just yeah. done the games at Chapel Hill and came over to watch <laughs> Gibbons and uh, Chambers, know. and you didn't have an umbrella. Yeah, I don't know if rainstorm. It might have been a hurricane in December. A squall. <laughs> it was. It was a squall. It was a weather activity. It was not about, fun being down there on the sideline for right? about an hour. Yeah, I went and huddled up underneath the bleachers. Oh, did you? Three thousand people. <laughs> but that was an impressive performance in the conditions. Yeah, the way Gibbons played and really took it to Chambers. Oh, big stuff by the Crusaders there. And Cougar comes out after the stick holding his arm. So a punt up coming here. And they'll lose yardage. Now this will actually be third down here. So but as this game develops early on so far, the defenses are winning, dominating. It's going to come down to special teams, defenses making a play to help out the offense, and then penalties. It's going to be all the little things. That's going to determine the outcome here. And interested to see which offense can really step up, make an explosive play to get things going. Line to gain is the 44. Simmons. Nice move. He will not get there. What an open field stick. Blake Raphael, the inside backer. The senior comes up with a tremendous open field tackle. Well, Raphael's got college offers coming in. Good job in space. As the pocket collapses, Simmons gets out. And then Raphael says, nowhere to go. Makes the play. Gets off the field on third down. So they're a couple of yards short. Drive will not continue. And the third time, Williams punting. No opportunity for Peebles. They'll down it. Looks like it's going to be the 37 is where it'll be spotted down. So a 31-yard effort there. Well, we invite you to stay tuned for the Talk It Out NC halftime report. We'll have this week's Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athletes participating school interviews with the principals. Highlights and more. Talk It Out NC. Start the conversation. Stop underage drinking. Defensive struggle to say the least early. Yeah, the offenses, they've got to go over the sideline, figure out ways where they can make plays, whether that's a trick play or getting the ball to the outside. Right now, the interior of the defensive line and the front seven, they're doing a nice job on both sides and really not allowing any running room. With the completion out to midfield, and that will create a little bit of breathing room, and it's a first down upcoming here off of the Crusader catch by Landon Lawrence. The first down for myspot.nc.gov, your spot for COVID-19 protection. We have the RPO fake handoff play action. It sucks the linebackers up and clears out the middle of the field. Newbauer does a nice job finding Lawrence, hitting him in stride. Newbauer had three interceptions at Bergen Catholic up in New Jersey earlier in the year. Looked good throwing there. Those are his only three picks of the year and I've got news for you he will not be the only one to throw an interception against that crowd right nothing for Nick Leonard there and it's second and ten Andre Evans coming up and run support the senior diagnosing the run and seeing there's an open lane filling the gap
almost midway through the second quarter. Pressure. And going down to the sack, the 45-yard line. Neubauer getting back there to him eventually and uh, making the uh, hit for the Cougars defensively is Zane Williams. It was an A-gap blitz. Aaron Reynolds, number 41, and Williams, 30, come through right up the middle. And then Williams cleans it up. He's been so good throughout this season. Over 20 tackles on the year. Physical right in the middle quarterback of the defense. First full sack for him. Six yard line. We're gonna run Alex Duarte in for Lemon. Number 19. See him line up over on the far side. Stack Yardley behind a receiver to the near side. More pressure unleashes the pill. Gonna be incomplete. Martez Smith up the middle does it again. We called his name already a couple times. The interior pressure out on the edges. They had a clean pocket, but that middle pressure is so hard for a quarterback when you feel the defender falling into your lap. So a punt here upcoming. And uh, some struggles throwing the football here early. Monty out. He'll boot it from the 46. So you get the sense it might take a, a play on special teams or something defensively taking advantage of a turnover the way this is developing. Back deep for the Cougars. And no opportunity here for Wake Forest. We'll be down at the 33. Just a 21-yard effort. Cougars will have their hands on the football. Can somebody break through? It's been a defensive grudge match, a slobber knocker. Welcome back to Friday Night Rivals presented by Air Experts Heating and Cooling. Earlier this week, Coach Wright told us culturally his tagline is be a man. And the idea is to leverage football to produce godly young men. He said, you can do the right thing, but not get the right results, which means you have to keep pushing through and do more things right until you get the right results. And he said, this is where they are this season, creating an environment to push through the difficult times. Back to you guys. Yeah, they have a message each week. That's the overall theme of the season. And that is something that uh, they have embraced here in this Gibbons program. Very little on first down. In fact, I didn't think he was going to be able to find anything, but somehow the senior, Ava Swale, was able to maybe nudge ahead and pick up a yard. I'm actually going to say he lost a yard. So, second and long upcoming there. What a good man Coach Wright is. He grew up in the Central Florida area, played at UCF. And went on and... Dallas Theological Seminary he earned his doctorate degree while he was coaching at North Raleigh Christian back in the early 2000s. Off the helmet and another ball that almost bounced into the hands of the awaiting defender potentially. Grant was who they wanted defensively. Oliver Evans, the senior who was injured in that title game last year right after that deluge of rain was uh, the defender there for Gibbons. Really good coverage by Nolan Weirich as well. It was an out route by Grant. Had a little bit of separation. Big third down coming up here for Wake Forest. Can you protect up front, give Simmons time to throw the ball down the field? Mikey DeBesquale in number eight is up at the top of the screen in the slot. He's a guy to look for. He'll go downfield and it'll be incomplete. Just a little Nigel Lucas is who they were hoping for. And I'm not so sure maybe Simmons thought there was going to be some pressure coming, so he just wanted to get rid of it, not take a sack there. Well, Gibbons showed pressure and then pulled back and sat into coverage. And I'll tell you, though, this is a defense on each side that's a state championship caliber defense. I mean, right now we haven't seen any points being scored, and that's because each side has championship players, and that's why they're going to make deep playoff on both these teams. So the Cougars will down that one. 
27 yard line. 26 over the loudspeaker here, and here's a flag on the field. Sportsmanlike against Cardinal Gibbons, or rather the Cougars. They've not been penalized as much tonight as Gibbons. Cougars are three and zero. They were eight and four a season ago, and four and one in the Northern Athletic Conference. Well, you talk about big games, night after night, Friday after Friday, week after week. You get in that league in football, it is a really tough neighborhood. Uh, there's a lot of depth in the league. You got Rollsville, Hillbrook, Wake Forest, Harrison. Wakefield, Nightdale, all those teams are capable of making the playoffs. So week in, week out, it's a tough gauntlet. I'll tell you, for Cardinal Gibbons, what they've done early on in this season with their non-conference schedule, and they've got a big game with Leesville Road coming up in a few weeks as well. So these teams are going to be tested once they get to the playoffs. There's Reggie Lucas there. He'll get a shot at Leesville next week. Now, the thing you admire about both of these guys, great programs, they develop great young men. They develop not only talented football players, but productive members of society. And here's a sack going down, Neubauer. And again, it is Zane Williams. But Jay, they also, it's a disciplined program on both sides, and they win. It is, and you can see the discipline out on the field. With these guys being in the right position, making plays. Zane Williams, I've already called his name a few times. Such a physical linebacker, so smart. The leader on that side of the ball. He didn't play last week. Here's a throw, hit as he got rid of it. Neubauer, nice catch, springing free across midfield. It's Yardley. We'll check on Neubauer and see if he's okay because he got a lick late on him. He's staying tough in the pocket. Wake Forest brings the blitz from the backside. Was able to get the ball out just in time. And that was Andre Evans, number 15, coming off the edge. He's the senior. The myspot.nc.gov first down, your spot for COVID 19 protection. Neubauer on the run, unloads, catch. Got something going now with the little run after the grab. And it'll be another first down following the reception by Lemon. Lemon's a really good route runner. Wake Force is starting to bring more pressure. This is Smith trying to chase down Neubauer. This is where the athleticism of Neubauer really helps him out, getting out of the pocket, but keeping his eyes downfield to find Lemon. Cougars burn a timeout here with two and a half remaining in what has been a pretty rapidly moving first half. Coach Wright will assemble his side. Reggie Lucas and the Wake Forest Cougars on the far sideline. Well, your invitation to stay tuned for the Talk It Out and See Halftime Report. We'll have this week's Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athletes and a lot more highlights, stats, great interviews. Talk It Out and See. Start the conversation. Stop underage drinking. Week four matchup here, we alluded to it in the beginning. This is a game you would normally see sometime on Thanksgiving or later. All right. Fourth, fifth round, maybe even the regional final. Yeah, I mean, I'd expect both these teams to be there till the end. I mean, you look at the coaching staff, the tradition, the talent, they have it all. And there's a lot of young players that we see them now here early on in the season. But just imagine how much they're going to improve once you get to November. And we've mentioned it, it is a gorgeous night here. Perfect weather. So Gibbons getting something going. Offensively, back-to-back -back completions. 
And they go with Smalls. He's looking to turn the corner. And wrapped up. It'll be a loss of five. He is talented. He is speedy. But this Cougar defense pursues to the football as well as anybody. So they swarmed in a pack. There are four Cougars coming over to make the play down the sideline. And they read the keys. They see it's a counter. Smalls goes towards the right, cuts back towards the left. And they sealed off the edge. Grant, nice job over there making the play along with his teammates. Really nicely done by Frank there. The officially a loss of three, second there are two, second and 12. That's incomplete. So now third and long upcoming. Think about this though, son. Both these teams are so used to being when they go on the road, you know, everybody wants to be, you get everybody's best shot. Right. You really do. I mean, we've seen it time and time again with Wake Forest in their conference and non conference. And we see it a lot with Cardinal Gibbons. Well, they're used to these atmospheres, and they're used to everybody you know, really playing their best against them. And that's what impresses me both about each side is you know, they're getting the best shot from each team on their schedule. And they find ways to win week after week. But for these players, how about this opportunity to go against one of the best teams, have that competition, and know what's at stake in this ballgame? They bring pressure again. Newbauer spins out. Newbauer tucks and keeps. He's brought down at the 26, so they flushed him. And the scramble, and Zane Williams is one of the tacklers to bring him down, along with Aaron Reynolds, the 6'4", 190-pound senior. Uh, the blitz comes right up the middle, and Newbar gets away. Look at him keep his eyes up, though, and then the athleticism takes over. He gets a couple yards, continues to move towards the red zone. And Jay, there's all kinds of guys in white uniforms and blue hard hats around the football. Yeah, I mean, they're playing so physical, but they're hustling the ball. When the coaching staff turns on the film tomorrow and sees these guys hustling, they're going to be very pleased with their effort. Big environment here tonight. Broadcast television, the whole nine, and those two are used to playing in big-time games. Timeout taken by the Crusaders here. Both teams have two remaining. In a minute to go here, what would you draw up on fourth down here if you're, you're Coach Wright and their OC, Bill Lee. Well, in this situation, all right, you got a minute left. Do you trust your defense if you don't get the, if you don't pick it up? I, I would say yes right now. Your defense is playing outstanding. Do you want to go ahead and kick a field goal, or would you rather be aggressive here? I, I think right now they're probably going to keep the offense out of the field and see if they can pick it up. I would get Neubauer out on the run. We've seen Wake Forest starting to heat things up, bring more blitzes in the second quarter. I'd expect a blitz, so I would try to get your quarterback out on the run so we can find his wide receiver. Monty has a field goal this year, but this would be a 44-yard. Yeah, it's a tough situation. You don't want to put too much pressure on your special teams. Now they added 11 seconds as well. Looks like they special teams is in the huddle now. Well, this will be interesting, won't it? I'll tell you, points are going to be at a premium, so if you can execute here, three points with some momentum, if you can get a stop on the defense side going into the halftime break, will really benefit Gibbons. Member of the Chet Yardley fan club there. <laughs> Reggie Lucas. Always great to catch up with both these coaches, but Reggie Lucas. And here's what's interesting, Jake. Wake Forest, they've scored in 153 consecutive games coming into tonight. Given they have scored in 96 consecutive games. Both teams, no points as we near halftime. I think that old streaks will continue on. I expect to see some points in the second half for sure. And Colonel Gibbons may get on the board here, but this is a really good group on the defensive end. If they kick a field goal, the protection unit for Cardinal Gibbons has to be strong because we've seen Wake Forest throughout the years make plays on special teams blocking kicks. Gibbons averaging just 55 yards per game on the ground coming in. A lot of that is certainly Chambers not able to run the football effectively that day. Reggie Lucas been through a few of these before. Going to be at a slight angle for Monty here, who's one for three in his career. Hit one earlier this season. And he buries that one. 
That'll make it three zip. So the Monty field goal of 44 yards. And they're on the board. So he drilled it. Plenty of room, no doubt. As soon as the ball left the foot. Right down the middle with length and Stephen Wright, when you've got a great kicker, it really gives you so much confidence. Look at the height on that ball. Oh, it's good from 50. Monty just stays cool. That's what you want out of the kicker. Johnny Carlucci, he was all kinds of fired up the holder. So Reggie Lucas with two timeouts and just under a minute to go here. You don't want to be overly aggressive and make a bad play, but I, I think you give what Simmons a couple of cracks at it here to push it downfield depending on where you yeah. return this kickoff to. Well, the, the focus and the message is special teams. Let's get a return here, help out our offense. You still got time with the timeouts under a minute, but you're going to have to play quickly here, but your special team can really give you a boost. So it's time for the American Military University kickoff. AMU, the number one provider of higher education to the U.S. military. He's put five in the end zone for touchbacks. For six. So the 20-yard line, they'll have to add some time here to the clock. So two timeouts. Good amount of time to maybe do something. Well, I, th I think, especially on this first play, you'd be aggressive, see what you can do here. And then, depending on you know, this play, if you pick up positive yards and play up tempo, you have your timeouts as well. But if you don't get anything going, you take a sack, then you may want to be more careful. But you've got a talented quarterback in Simmons, only a sophomore, very athletic, strong arm. Reggie Lucas is really pleased with his development. Hmm. All right, so 48 seconds is what they say. 20-yard line is where the Cougars will scrimmage from. And not a whole lot there on first down. Ghana Mazuma, the junior, swallowing up the running back Armston. Check, check, check. Go to the air. And out there. What a grab at the 40-yard line. Another sensational catch from Frank Barrett. First down upcoming here off this tremendous grab. A beautiful throw by Simmons. And Barrett high points the ball with the defender's hands in the middle of his chest. He's able to bring it in. 6'4", 175-pound junior with a, another grab tonight. This time, he just took it out of the air at the apex. Well, there it has really good speed, and I love the play call. You run the ball, kind of looks like you're just going to lead the clock, and then you hit the defense over the top, going to your big, tall receiver, and Barrett makes another play for the offense. You still have one timeout for the Cougars. You want to get towards the sideline, of course, to save that and try to get into field goal position. But again, you can still take a shot towards the middle with the timeout. If I'm Gibbons, I'm protecting the sidelines. Barrett actually comes out on this play. Simmons has got an arm, doesn't he, Jim? He does. I mean, he's very talented. He's been accurate with the football. Can't break out of the grasp there of Dozier, and the sack for Dozier is second of the night. You know, Dozier committed to Liberty, just flies off the edge. You need your top players to make plays in critical situations. That sack pushes back Wake Forest. Right now the clock is saying zero. But I think they're going to add some more time. Reggie back. Lucas is saying, I've got time. He beat two blocks. The tackle, the beginning, and then the running back coming up. And he used it with speed. 
I understand that uh, Armstead is down. Running back that came in with 100 yards on the ground this year. We'll get into some of this in the second half. I mean, Cardinal Gibbons has been around more than 110 years, but Wake Forest High School has been around 81 seasons, so two tradition-rich just institutions. Yeah. Uh, great alumni from both schools. Oh, yeah. They care about their sports, and they have a lot to be proud of. And you see guys playing on Saturday that played for both these teams. Well, they develop players. We talked about it on and off the field. But these guys go on to the college level, and we see them playing on Saturdays and even some on Sundays as well. So they've added four seconds back to the clock, much to the chagrin of Coach Wright. Just hope here that uh, Way Armstead is okay. And Gibbons taking an E all class from both these programs. Jay, we get to interact with a lot of great head coaches, and these are just two of my favorite to talk to each year. They're great guys, and the thing with both of them is they care about these kids. They want them to be great on the football field, but off the field, they're developing leaders men and teaching them lessons they'll be able to carry on to college and then older as they go throughout life and their fathers and just being good people and that's what they embody whenever we talk with them I love talking to them about the game but also talking about other things separate from football because these are great guys and they care about the right things and do it the right way. Next Friday will be in Garner as the South Garner Titans take on the Garner Trojans in that burgeoning series. No Scotty McCreary this year. He won't be back? I don't think so. I was told today that likely will not be there this time around, but you never know. Maybe he'll surprise us. But it's good to see Armson get up. Looks like he's removing some tape, too, so an important piece of the backfield for Wake Forest. Coach Lucas played with his cousin in high school, his son, his cousins with Sean Grant. Defensive coordinator here before he became the head coach. Played at Lenore Ryan in the defensive backfield, and now Simmons is quarterback. No timeouts remaining for Wake Forest, so go for the end zone here. Right? Yeah, I mean, who do you go to? Frank Barrett. He's made two big plays through here, number 84 down the bottom of the screen. Nigel Lucas as well. Very fast up at the top. Simmons. Flag, and he slips down at the 48. Likely going to be a hold, so that'll be the final play of the half. That'll do it. A field goal for Cardinal Gibbons is the difference in this one. Scoreless for Wake Forest in the first half. Cougars are usually the ones shutting down the opponents. Wake Forest on the year. Averaging 23 points on offense on the season. But they are holding opponents to less than a touchdown per game through the first three. So both teams will assemble for halftime, make their adjustments. And let's hear what's on the uh, docket for Cardinal Gibbons with Alexa K. Thanks for being with us today, Coach. It has been a defensive battle all over the field tonight. What do you have to do to get that ball across the goal line? We got we got to clean up our blocking up front. You know they've they've brought a handful of pressures, and we just got it. We've got some communication issues up front, and we're just going to get them cleaned up here at halftime. I think we get that taken care of. We'll be in a much better position in the second half. What is your message going into the locker room besides that? Yeah, just uh, play cleaner football. You know, we've uh, we've had our opportunities. We've had some drop passes. We have to miss reads. We've had some miss uh, miss assignments up front. I think we just got to we just got to play better football uh, at the end of the day. So um, we get that cleaned up, we'll be fine. Thank you so much for joining us, Coach. Back to you, Patrick. Thank you. Right, who was a state champion a year ago with his Cardinal Gibbons program. They lead Wake Forest 3 0 at intermission. Stay tuned. We'll have our Talk It Out NC halftime report after this.
You're watching the Talk It Out NC Halftime Report, and now it's time for the Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week. Presenting the award for Tatum and Atkinson is Season Atkinson. Tatum and Atkinson is proud to present the Friday Night Rivals Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week. From Wake Forest High School, the Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week is Vance Day. Vance is a three-year varsity football starter, two-time NCHSAA State Playoffs Player of the Week, and carries a 4.13 GPA. Vance is a National Honor Society candidate and serves the community through Tri-Area Ministries, Family Promise, and Promise Keepers. From Cardinal Gibbons High School, the Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week is Macy Pennessy. Macy is the varsity field hockey team captain, team MVP, a member of the Carolina All-Stars Field Hockey Club, and carries a 4.8 GPA. Macy is a member of the U19 National Indoor Team and Outdoor Team and was selected for the U19 Nexus Championship. Macy is the Franciscan Youth International Service Club leader, a member of National Honor Society, National Spanish Honor Society, and National Honor Society for Dance Arts. Congratulations to our Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week. This All-Star has now entered for a $5,000 scholarship at the end of the season. Tatum and Atkinson, injured in a rat, call the heavy hitters. Congratulations to our Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athletes. I had a chance to meet with our sponsor, Jacob Wirtz, earlier this evening, enjoying the festivities before the game. Hey guys, we have sponsor from West Shore Home, Jacob Wirtz, sales manager. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thanks for having me, this is awesome. Of course, I know, we got a good night for us. We have some questions for you, you ready? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so what does it mean for West Shore Home to be a partner with Friday Night Rivals? Well, this is, this is our community. I think it's extremely important. I mean, you look at all the hardworking people around here, the kids, the cheerleaders, the families. Uh, it kind of engulfs community, and high school football is community. It's what America's made of. Well, that was going to be my next question. What does it mean to be a part of the community with West Shore Home? Yeah, I think it's quite awesome, especially partnering with WRDC, being here every week. Uh, you can tell how excited these guys are to get out there and get their best foot forward. And part of our, one of our core values is getting better every day. And you can tell that happens with these, these guys every week. So we're, we're excited. This is great. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being with us, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Talk It Out NC Halftime Report. And now it's time for the My Spot Medical Timeout, your spot for COVID-19 protection. With us today is Dr. Charlene Wong, Assistant Secretary for Children and Families at NCDHHS. She tells us about the new COVID-19 vaccine, Novavax. The Novavax vaccine against COVID-19 is a new two-dose vaccine that's available to any adult age 18 and up who hasn't yet been vaccinated. This means that there is another safe, effective, and free option for any adult out there who still hasn't been vaccinated. You now have another option to choose from. COVID-19 vaccine boosters are now recommended for anyone ages five and up. The boosters really strengthen that protection that we got with our first set of vaccines. Folks can find a place to get their COVID-19 vaccine booster at myspot.nc.gov or call the number below. Thank you, Dr. Wong. We will be right back. It's our Talk It Out NC Halftime Show. I'm Patrick Johnson, Jay Sunhalder, the ECU football alum alongside Sonny, it's a 3 0 game, and it looked like Wake Forest early on was going to make a move and find their way into the end zone. As we look at the highlights here, Barrett with the first of two spectacular catches in this game. A beautiful throw from Simmons. This one pops up into his lap. He makes the play. Accurate throw, hand eye coordination, amazing catch to get inside the 10 yard line. And then I think. This play we're about to see, the goal line stand for Cardinal Gibbons is what swung this game. Uh, it's just pressure up the middle. Josh Stone King, number 99, made a few tackles on this stand, winning up front. Cardinal Gibbons 
penetrated the gaps. There was nowhere to run, and this was a huge momentum shift as Wake Forest was driving. And then the field goal, the lone points in this one. No doubter down the middle. 44 yards. Good for Monty. We'll be back with second half action. So stick around as it's given. Wake, titanic matchup on a Friday night under the lights. Welcome back to Friday Night Rivals. I have Coach Lucas here. Coach, it has been a defensive battle so far. What are your halftime adjustments? Well, not many on that end. We want to keep, continue to get after the quarterback, maybe get a turnover, maybe get some momentum going our way. Just keep playing great defense and see if we can get something going on offense. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us, and good luck. Back to you guys. Great job, Alexa, to get uh, Coach Lucas there. Going for victory number 150 tonight is 13 years at Wake Forest have uh, brought the Cougars three championships. They've appeared in the title game a couple other times in addition to that. And uh, cool and calm is Coach Lucas. If there's anybody to make an adjustment, he will. But he's got a pretty darn good counterpart on the other sideline. And Coach Wright, these two have a lot of respect for each other. They do. I mean, both these coaching staffs are two of the best. I mean, when you watch the teams out on the field, how hard they play, their discipline, but also the schemes that they play with, the play calling, knowing when to bring a blitz, when not to on the offensive side, knowing how to attack a defense. Two of the best, and you know this ball game right now, it's a defensive battle, but I love these types of games because this is what matters, championship level defense once you get into the playoff. American Military University kickoff upcoming. AMU, the number one provider of higher education to the U.S. military. Elfrick to kick, he pulls back. He's averaged 20 yards on his kick returns this year. Second half getting going from West Raleigh, his toe greets leather. Eight yard line, Peebles trying to kick it out at the 25 and a pretty good tackle to hold him to just a return of 20. It was really nicely done there by uh, Malachi Carr. And we've got, unfortunately, another player down for Cardinal Gibbons this time, or excuse me, for Wake Forest this time, it's Andre Evans. We'll grab a timeout and check on him when we come back. Not a lot on the ground between these two in the first half. Gibbons a little more prolific through the air. Wake Forest with the lone turnover. Penalties relatively low, but you know, these two teams are so disciplined. Anything above a couple for the game seems like a lot, but anything you can glean from that, Jack? Well, the running game. I mean, which team can get some success, something going is probably going to be who wins the ball game. There's been some success through the year, but the ground game's been non-existent. Well, we just saw Armston pass us arm in a sling, so certainly he will not be back. And speaking of the ground game, big gainer on the inside, hands off, and there is Johnski picking up a first down. Go to ncdps.gov slash careers and start a new career, but hold everything. We have a penalty flag being thrown. And it's a hold on Gibbons, their fourth penalty. So first at 13 now. Good first half for Neubauer. He was 9 of 15 with those 110 yards. Hand off again, and this time, no penalty for Nick Leonard, who carries it for the NCDPS first down. Leonard got through the first level of defense. Wake Forest put eight men in the block, box. Nice block up front by Brock Chapel that cleared the pass. Cardinal Gibbons at the 40 yard line. In this game, they got their ninth takeaway. You have to turn the ball over. Look at Newbauer, slings it up, and it's incomplete. Trying to 
Spot is tied in. Chapel dragging across the middle of the field under duress was Newbauer. Newbauer has really good awareness. See the athleticism getting out of the pocket, but when guys are coming to bring him down, his ability to just be slippery. Smith chasing him down. Williams as well. Two guys getting their arms on him. And he keeps his eyes upfield to try to make a play. Good coverage by Day and Lucas. Zane Williams, much like his teammate Evans, when we left you, Evans was on the field, but they're both cramping right now, Jay. Not an overly humid night, but this defense is putting out so much effort, and they've been out there so much. No, they're playing with intensity. These guys are playing their hearts out. And you see the weather, though, still during the week of practice. It's still very hot, so it's a culmination leading up to the ball game. These guys putting it all on the line tonight. A Cougar defense that has got 10 sacks coming into tonight and also eight interceptions. They are scoreless so far. Not quite a minute and a half into the third. Gibbons with just the field goal. Nancy Lucas, those three state titles. Wake Forest had a 45-game winning streak when they won those state championships in 16, 17, and 18. And they were beating Charlotte teams routinely. Yeah, but one of the main players is Dexter Lawrence, the defensive yep. tackle. All-American went to Clemson first-round draft pick. Now with the New York Giants, he had his jersey retired last week when Wake Forest beat Hoggard. A huge accomplishment. It was fun covering him and seeing him grow throughout his time at Wake Forest. Both these programs, and we've talked about it, have put guys at the next level. Wake, some guys in the pros, as you mentioned. Bauer leads them out. Your assessment of him so far, Jack? Well, I've been impressed. The second start. It's just the natural feel that he has in the pocket, knowing when to tuck it and run, keeping his eyes up. He's protected the football, and you know, he's going against a really good defense tonight. He's made some plays. Chapel shifts over to become a blocker for Leonard. They found something with him. First down run, midfield. Cuts it inside to the 40-yard line in Wake Forest territory. That's going to be a 20-yard scamper. It'll move the chains for an NCDPS first down. Leonard has the patience and makes a cut, follows his blockers, downfield Sheehan as well. And then he protects the football as he finishes it off the run. Something's going now up front. The offensive line getting some push, and Leonard is getting extra yardage on the ground. Frank, after the 21-yard gain, made the stop. Johnski picks up a couple. That's Grant and number 11, Brandon Williams. Grant and Brandon Williams for their defensive line. Getting down to some third level guys now. It's Wake Forest because of the cramping issue. Pick up of one a moment ago. It's second and nine. Newbauer, the junior, 6'3", 183 pounder. In at the controls. Let's go to the air here. Looking for his 10th completion, and he'll overshoot the would-be receiver there, Chet Yardley. You know, Cardinal Gibbons, a couple runs on the ground. You have success. Go to the play-action pass. They're looking towards the big play, going into the end zone. Really good coverage from Wake Forest, though, but I like the aggressiveness of Gibbons. Third and nine now for Newbauer. Wake gives pursuit. Oh, it's intercepted. Ninth pick of the year for the Cougars. Fourth of the year for Lucas. And he has a return out to the 45. Nigel Lucas, outstanding in coverage. You said it, fourth interception already in his fourth game. He's a college prospect. His re recruiting is really picking up. More schools are trying, starting to track him. Nine offers. And he reads the eyes of Newbauer. He sprints out towards the right, gets off Chapel, and then comes back, jumps in front as the hand-eye coordination make the play. And once he gets the ball in his hand, turns into a running back, trying to get extra yardage. 
Well, he had a heck of a game receiving against Clayton. Comes up with the INT there. And now he'll give a chance for Simmons and this offense for the Cougars to come out. Let's see what adjustments they've made. Yeah, with Lucas, really good size playing the secondary. Six foot one. That's what coaches are looking for. Big secondary players with long arms, and he fits the bill. Mikey Disquali. Pasquale will carry it out of bounds. I say he stayed in before he was dropped. If you're in the Wake Forest huddle, this is go time now. You get the big play from Lucas on the defense, then solid run. Pasquale on, you're Pasquale, you over the 50-yard line. You've got to get points on this drive. You know, the first half was tough, but now you make the play. This is where you've got to carry that momentum into a scoring drive. And they've taken it into Crusaders territory. Pasquale forging ahead, first down. That'll be for ncdps.gov slash careers. You can start your new career today. But for Deep Pasquale, he's got the speed on the outside. I'm so impressed with this toughness in between the tackles. There's not a lot of room to run, but he's continuing to churn his leg forwards, picking up positive yardage. Three rushing touchdowns this year for the senior. Michael Thompson split out junior receiver. Simmons. They're just going to pound it off that right side. They've found a little something themselves with the running game. They have. I mean, right now, they're in a groove on the right side. That's where they're having success. Dozier making the play. But I like Wake Forest. The way they're running the ball on this drive and their offensive line getting some push up front. Opponents came in rushing for 188 yards a game against Gibbons through their first three. And of course, the opponents might as well be Alabama and the Buffalo Bills, right? Chambers and, of course, the uh, nationally ranked opponent, Virgin Catholic up in... Oriadel, New Jersey. Simmons pulls it down. Darts out of bounds. That's an element of his game that he will be very dangerous in in a Cougars uniform for years to come. His pocket presence. A normal quarterback, that would have been a sack and a loss of eight yards. He gets it back to the line of scrimmage. This is on his backside. He sees Stone King coming through, and then the speed to get outside. Raphael does a nice job of helping get him towards the sideline. But now you've got an opportunity on third and nine where you don't give up a sack. It's still manageable situation to pick up the first. Coach Wright had the quicks there, son. He did. Saw him come over. Good footwork on the sidelines. All right, from the 43 to the air. Grab made. Barrett, 35 yard line thereabouts. It's going to be close. Number 84. Third reception for Barrett. Might have it if that's any indication. Yep, and remove the chains. Nice route, nice throw. Great job. Accurate ball. Look at the blitz pickup. Nice job on Stone King to get, give Simmons time to throw and then Barrett. Double coverage. Able to focus in. Yeah, he got to the 34, and that will move the chains for an NCDPS first down. The heck of a route, and then the move after the catch. With, with Barry, he knew where the first down marker was. He got beyond it and then came back to the ball and just had enough room. Completes a pass here down to the 23 to Lucas. It was a curl That's route by Lucas. He had the interception, now playing both ways on the offensive side. Drove up about 15 yards and comes back to the ball. At the bottom of the screen, Simmons looks to the left. Comes back towards the right and hits the open spot of the zone to find Lucas. He was decisive there too, wasn't he? He was. He's making quick decisions and reading the defense. And he doesn't keep his head stuck on one side of the field. He'll quickly move over and find his second option. The NCD, uh, the NCDPS first down. Go to ncdps.gov slash careers and start your new career. To the ground. Maybe a yard. Nice open field tackle there to stave off a block as well. And the uh, stop made at the 23-yard line by Ryan Ziegler. 
And Ziegler only a junior, 6'1", 228, with great speed. He's got the recognition skills, but when you see him run, he attacks and he's very aggressive. Second and 10. Get the feel, Sonny, that this is a big opportunity for the Cougars in this one. It is. Well, they got the message at a halftime break. So they've made some adjustments. They're running the ball with more confidence, and Simmons is getting outside of the pocket, throwing the ball well. He'll go for the end zone here, and it's incomplete. Barrett got twisted around. Coleman, Chip Coleman, was on him defensively. Simmons two out of three so far in the second half. Chip Coleman matched up with Barrett's height. He's six foot two. Is that rover position where we'll see him at linebacker and also in the secondary. Seven of nine tonight. Paul all over the stats. Missed Paul not here last year. Paul's he had him back. He had a birthday this week. You know? He did. He did. Happy birthday, buddy. It doesn't look a day over 25. What a young superstar. Here's the throw. Too tall. Keep a swally. All right, fourth and ten. What do you do? Well, decision time. Do you be aggressive and go for it, or do you match the score at three to three if you can convert? I believe you send your kicking unit out on the field. You've got confidence in your special teams. Go out there and do their jobs. It'll be a 41-yard try here for Helfrich. First field goal try this season. We'll get a good look at it here. Boom. Pretty good stuff. 3-3 game. Five minutes, 12 seconds to go in the third in the Wake Forest student body. A little something to cheer about on the offensive side. The snap, the spot, right down Broadway. Hey, folks, stay tuned. During the fourth quarter, we'll have the Harris Teeter scoring drive of the game. Your Vic card saves on fuel, food, and more. 3-3 three, three ball game. Defensive game. I was telling you in the break, it needs to be about 20 degrees. <laughs> no, it does not. I uh, don't do well. <laughs> I don't do well no, in that weather. I sure don't. <laughs> American Military <laughs> University kickoff. And the... Tackles made drive the 30. <laughs> what do you mean I don't? Oh, you do? You well, drive in 20? I, I know how to dress. Now, uh, I'm going to tell a story on you here. <laughs> I stay inside when it's we, Well, we had to do a playoff game on radio many years ago, you and I did. And we were outside. We were in New Bern. Remember this? Yeah, I remember. And it was in the teens. And Jay brought, like, a very light fleece. And he was blue by the time the game. I think I had hypothermia. Right? <laughs> I don't think you thought out. <laughs> I still got scars on it. We get the heater up there. Change of QB here, interestingly enough, with Small. Let's see if they let him throw. Now he hangs on to the fake, trying to turn the corner. This is sheer athletic ability because they pursued against him very well. But Smalls has the next level speed. I mean, he's a guy, when the ball's in his hands, he can take it all the way. Wake Forest is keen on him, trying to keep him in the pocket. They did a nice job closing off the edge not letting him get out on the perimeter. Neubauer back in the ball game. Helmet comes off there. Jonski loses yardage, and boy, Wake is fired up. After the halftime break for Wake Forest, interception from Lucas. You drive down, you get points to even up the score. Now the defense looks like they're playing with an extra step. And Grant, who's been all over the field, we highlight him in the open again, making a play on the edge. Grant's impressive. He's physical. And again, one of many guys that's playing both ways. So he's been out on the field all night long. He doesn't slow down. Newbauer. Wrapped up. Grant there. He goes down. 
He fought off a heck of a block. What a play. Matt DeJesus, along with Grant. The pocket collapses and Neubauer, give him credit. He stays strong here, keeping his eyes down the field, but Grant wraps him up, brings him down. Two other Cougars come over to help him out, but back-to-back -back play. And if you're coming off the edge, Jay, that's how you take on a blocker out of the backfield. Right? Exactly. You just drive through him, use your hands, and then go over and make the play. And Grant continuing the star for this defense. The 30, punt comes down at the 29. Flag is thrown. Swally runs out of bounds. So that was a 41-yard punt. Let's see what the marker's about. Going to be a hold against the Cougars. Later on in tonight's show, we'll select the West Shore Home player of the game. West Shore Home converts your old bathtub into a modern and spacious walk in shower in just one day. Simmons and they'll go on the ground. Pick up of one. Alexa K down on the sidelines. Wake on the road tonight. They were road warriors a year ago. Get it down to her in just a minute. Yeah, guys, Wake Forest renovated their entire stadium this past year. And last year, they played all season on the road. They feel like it just made their guys a little bit tougher. Coach Lucas said it was incredible to get to come back to their home field and play in their environment with this brand new, newly renovated stadium. This guy, these guys put on the new red uniforms and they were just ready to go. Also, being on the road like that definitely prepares you for an environment like tonight. Back to you guys. They've not been shaken tonight, Jay. They stuck to what they've what they do, and they remain very calm and composed. Even keel. Yeah. Look at Reggie Lucas. Very solid, consistent, both coaching staffs. I mean, you see them exuding confidence to their teams. And it's so important when you're out on the field to see your coaching staff being confident in you and calm on the side. You throw here on third down? Well, I, I love being aggressive, so I think a situation here, if your O-line can protect, you take a shot down from Jewel. They'll operate from the 26. And this might change what the play call is. Fox still running. Reggie not happy. It is going to be a sideline infraction against Wake Forest. So that's a warning, right, Jay? Or was that the actual penalty? That's a warning. It'll be third and long still. We're going to the air. Simmons got rid of it. Incomplete. Smart play there. Gerdak number 90 coming off the edge. Talented junior, six foot two. This is a big group. The defensive line for Carter Gibbons. Before that field goal, Gibbons was vying for a seventh shutout in their last 19 games. And that's how you win a state championship. You win it with defense. And we see teams each week, and the best teams are the one that complements each other, that play great offense, but also have a defense that they can really trust and team a defense that's tough as well. Kick drops down at the 42-yard line. That's a 34-yard punt, but it gives Gibbons some very good field position from which to work with here with a minute 15 remaining in the third. Well, if you're in this huddle, you have to realize, hey, listen, it's been a tough night so far, but we've got to gel at this point. We've got to make something happen and take advantage of the field position we've just been gifted. 371 yards against Richmond County last week of total offense. They averaged 376 
in their state championship a year ago. They were balanced, Jay, 187 and a half passing, 188.4 rushing. And that's what makes it so tough to defend is it's a 50-50 offense. You can't you know, gauge whether they're going to run or pass. They do a really nice job of play action games. How many coaches tell you over the years, we want to be balanced and they're anything but? Gibbons, that model of consistency, deep throw. Oh, knocked away at the last instant. Sensational play defensively there by Williams. That was something of beauty. Well, Williams, six foot two, 215 pounds. Great coverage skills. Knocks it down with his left arm. Keeps the right arm off the back of Lawrence. Perfect technique. A good no call there, too. There's really not a lot of contact, but we've seen many times right. somebody throw a flag when they shouldn't. Oh, big burst here. Leonard, 40-yard line, down the sideline. 20, 15, rushed out, shy of the 10. Here comes the flag, though. Would be a 46-yard run if it stood, but it's coming back. Another block in the back. And a handful of Crusader penalties tonight. And this is the second big run by Leonard. That's gotten called back. He's been the spark to the offense. There it is. Well no, back behind the 15 play. yards behind the play. It's one of those you're about to enter the fourth turn. There's a wreck behind you, so there's a caution <laughs> on the NASCAR track. I know we don't talk a lot of NASCAR here on the broadcast, but the smartest thing that that sport has done <laughs> is bring the All-Star race back to North Florida. They announced it yesterday here in Raleigh. Best thing that NASCAR's done in ages. Ages. And I know what a fan you are, so you have plenty to say about it. <laughs> I'm very happy that you're happy about it. Second and short. And the Cougars. It's a big stand there. And coming out fired up is Aaron Reynolds. Reynolds is a physical specimen. He's 6'4", 190. Long arms, really good recognition skills. He saw as a running play, and he did not hesitate. He attacked the gap to make the play. He might have lost a little bit there. Big hole this time, good run. And a good carry. And that's a 14-yard run for Cardinal Gibbons and Ryan Ziegler, who checked in. Uh, he's been playing linebacker on the defensive end. He's the power back, 230 pounds running downhill. Great play call. Big run to end the third, and it sets Gibbons up. 3-3 ball game as we go to the fourth. Coach Wright nodded up three apiece, and he's got something going with his offense all of a sudden. Inside the 40-yard line, first down. Fresh set of downs, and they found some success with Ziegler running the football. They give it to him again, line up with two tight ends, try to move the line of scrimmage. Up the middle. Stone King in there as well. So second down and six upcoming here. Big number 99, defensive tackle, now moving over to fullback position. 6'2", 250. Power eye here. Ziegler. And he's going to be close to a first down. What do you think of this, Sonny? Uh, Donovan Dozier, number 45, the defensive end. He's in as well. So they got two defensive studs. Ziegler, 230 pounds. They're just loading things up on the offensive line and the tight ends, fullbacks. It's running north and south. Third and two right now. To me, this is four down territory. Third down. Stone King. And he'll 
probably have the first. It's going to be close. It is going to be a first down. Needed two, got three. Stone King's brother was a quarterback here a few years ago playing at the college level. It's impressive the versatility we've seen from each team. Guys playing both ways. And they start one side of the field now coming over making an impact on the offensive side. MySpot.nc.gov first down. Your spot for COVID-19 protection. Left side they go this time. Raphael. Grant made the tackle. Be second and ten. Raphael, another guy coming over from defense. Star linebacker getting a carry. And Grant off the backside using his speed to make another play. So the power advantage to Cardinal Givens right now, but for Wake Forest, certainly the quickness advantage. They've got to figure out a way to take advantage of it. Actually, they lost a yard. Flag comes flying, so that'll back him up even more. So it's a decision here, Jay. Do you make him go third and ten here, or do you back him up even more? Back him up again. Yeah. Okay. Because we saw earlier the strength and the special teams. The field goal. The ball would have been good from 50 yards. Move him back here. And Gibbons has been running the ball. We'll see if they go back to more of an open set to try to throw the ball. Well, that's a great point because so many times at this level, you don't think the kicking game, but that really right. comes into play. Here. Well, that's the difference. If you didn't have a great kicker, then you force the third down. But with Gibbons' kicking situation, you want to move it back and force him out of field goal range. Well, Monty's already hit one from 44 tonight. 41-yarder for Helfrich. Hold up front by Gibbons. Yep. That'll back him up even more as Leonard got the handle. It was Zane Williams coming off the edge. Good to see him back out there. Coming on the blitz, and Gibbons just held him and twisted him to try to seal the edge. Cardinal Gibbons winning their first state title a year ago, as we've mentioned. There's the hold. Great work by our crew. So, hey, there was a discussion about 30 years ago what to do with football at Cardinal Gibbons. There was some, they were independent then. It had not really ever caught on, and there was a little bit of discussion of maybe is it worth the pursuit of football? Because they were really struggling when they, they kind of brought it back in the 90s. Well, the answer is yes, it is. Coach <laughs> <laughs> Wright was very frank about that this week. Boy, they have been backed up a ton here. Going for the end zone, though, on the throw. And it's going to be another interception. This time picked off by Day. <laughs> so the second interception thrown in the game by the junior Newbauer. A great play by Vance Day. He's a scholar athlete for Wake Forest. Now on the field reading the eyes of Newbauer sprinting back down the middle of the field. That is such a tough catch when you're running full speed over the shoulder catch. The defense standing strong again and Day coming through. And for Wake Forest, originally Gibbons was in field goal range to get the ball back, keep them off the board, and now you've got a long field to go. But your offense has an opportunity. They're going to place it down on the three. I guess what they're saying is maybe where he came down with the ball, but he didn't take a knee or anything there. The only thing I could think of is it was intercepted at the three and his momentum took him into the the end zone. That's the only thing I could think of here why it's not spotted at the 20. Let's see. Catches it there. And I guess they're saying it's down there because he ran it into the end zone. So had he stopped and maybe turned up the field, but he couldn't have taken it into the end zone. So it's not a touchback, which right. is the only thing I can think of there, Jack. Get a little bit of daylight. Second and long. 
and Gibbons is there to drop him for a loss. Say no gain officially here. Third down and seven. Logging it up there was Jaeger. Gibbons gave up 560 to Chambers earlier in the year. They have held this Cougar offense. Very little here tonight. And now it's going to be fourth down. They got enough yards to give the punting unit more room. Tavian Williams, great defensive back coming out to punt the ball. Short punt. A flag has come in, and the ball will drop down and ends up being a 35-yard punt, but excellent field position for Cardinal Gibbons. But let's see what the penalty flag is all about here and why it was thrown. It'll be an illegal shift. It's the kicking team. It'll be declined. We will step away and come back with more. It's our West Shore home Friday Night Rivals, presented by Air Experts Heating and Cooling. Three-three ball game. Patrick Johnson, Jay Sunalder, and Alexa Kay. Next week we'll be in Garner, South Garner. Against the Garner Trojans, you talk about tradition-rich program. Fun rivalry down there. Great crowd last year. Which offense can make the play? That's the name of the game. Al Stewart into the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Hall of Fame over the summer. And uh, one of your old coaches, Harold Robinson. Williamston, of course, he Coach. coached you in college at East Carolina, and uh, they were among a banner class that went in to the hall. Great guy. We love Coach H. Rod. All right, it's go time now. 7:25 left in the ball game. Gibbons, great field position. Can they take advantage of it? The Crusaders operate from the Wake Forest 44. This has put the Cougars' defense in their toughest spot of the game. Whit Neubauer leads them out. He'll throw, and it's incomplete. Neubauer, though, now highly unofficial. 11 out of 21, but he's only hit on two here in the second half. Well, Cardinal Second Gibbons ten. had success when they went to the jumbo sets with two tight ends. Ziegler in the ball game, running the ball. We'll see if they go back to that right now. Four wide receivers, Chapel, the tight end, split out in the slot number 15. Thirty-nine. Here's the catch underneath Chapel, and he's able to muscle his way. Out of the 31. Well, they need to keep looking towards 15 in the middle of the field with Wake Forest bringing the blitz. He can handle those intermediate routes bigger than linebackers. Good job making the catch and then getting yards after the catch falling forward. Lucas eventually tripped him up. Pick up of eight. Here they go. Stone King back in at fullback. He'll get it. He'll burst through and stay on his feet. 10, 5, touchdown, Crusaders. And that a Crabtree Mall touchdown for Stone King. Your go-to destination for food and fashion for 50 years. Shop, dine, and explore our 200-plus stores and restaurants in the heart of Raleigh. Well, this is a great play call. Stone King lined up as the fullback. It was a quick hitter. Ziegler behind him, 
Niebauer hands it off, 99 gets it and keeps his feet moving. Wake Forest tried to tackle him high. He kept driving forward. The big defensive lineman coming in has made an impact on offense in the fourth quarter. Some of the Cougars defensively look a little fatigued out there, don't they? Well, it's tough when you've got a new set of fresh legs coming in on offense. 250 pounds at fullback, 230 at the running back position. Lonnie puts it through. First touchdown of the game and a seven-point spread. Stone King taking it to the house. Gibbons off their touchdown, six and a half to go. So, Sonny, I would say right now, if you're Wake Forest, you're thinking, obviously, drive it down and tie. But you're kind of running a four-minute offense here if, you, if you're Wake, I think. Exactly, yeah. I mean, you've got confidence that you can go down and score. But you've got plenty of time, but four-minute exactly. You want to play with some pace and tempo, but you've got four downs. To get and I think you want to give those guys on defense as much of a rest as you can possibly give them. Exactly, because... Those guys are playing both ways, so you've got to manage the defenders coming out on offense. You've got to give them a break, make sure they get their legs back. AMU kickoff upcoming here, American Military University, the number one provider of higher education to the U.S. military. That is a short kick, and I'm a little surprised at that. They were worried about kicking it deep and getting a long return, so they did a sky kick. 27 yard line. Yeah, it's not the greatest field position, but you have a kicker that could put right. put it in the end zone easily. So Reggie Lucas. He's been there before in the fourth quarter and seen some great comebacks over the years. Vying for his 150th career victory tonight. Simmons, it's a nice completion. And that one went to Michael Thompson, his first grab of the night. Uh, junior runs a hitch route over on the sideline. Wake Forest playing with a little bit of tempo. Still huddling up. Deep Esquale was also lined up in the slot, so we'll see them. They open things up, spread out the defense of Cardinal Gibbons. It's a good pickup on first down. Simmons tonight with completions of 40 yards and 34 yards already, so we know that he can hit the long one on you. And he'll go here and spots a man for a first down across the 45. Barrett with his fourth reception of the game. He's continuing to have a big ball game. That's going to be a personal Ooh. foul going against Gibbons, too. Wow, so that's big. So you get the first down and then the penalty yardage on top of that, and that's a my spot. .nc.gov first down, your spot for COVID-19 protection. But Barrett is impressive. Isn't he? yeah, he's a big kid, six foot four. Great blitz pickup, number 18. Rico Walston helping out Simmons. And Simmons scans the field, goes towards the right. Barrett again finding the open part of the zone defense. Add the yardage, the ball now just outside the 40. So the penalty, huge for the Crusaders there. They're closing in on double-digit penalties in this game. And you feel the sense of urgency for the Wake Forest offense. You can't give them extra yardage if you're given. Trick play. Receiver catches it. It's the coach's son, Lucas. That is the throwback from the running back. Ipeswa Quali with the throw to Lucas for the touchdown and that is Lucas's fourth reception for a score this season. Lyndon Dillard the offensive coordinator going to the bag of tricks. De Pasquale throws it over the top accurate throw to his close friend Nigel Lucas running a post route down the middle of the two seniors that have played football together throughout their lives making oh, a play. They bobbled the snap and Gibbons Able to keep him out of the end zone. Lucas Squally, who just threw it. 
snap was low. It squibbed in there. He did all he could to try to make something happen. So a tough break on the snap. And Gibbons there hustling to make the play. Defense Hall is trying to get to the edge. But now, 5-19, Gibbons can get the ball back. And special teams making an impact. Your defense is tired. And you need to get the football back. Do you go on sides here? No, still plenty of time. But if I'm Cardinal Gibbons, 99, Stone King, that was just out in the field, you've got to give him some time to rest. But I would go back to your jumbo package with Ziegler in the backfield, Stone King at fullback, and then Dozier over at the tight end position. Really load things up because that's where you've had success in the second half on offense. Now that might be something, too. If they are able to get downfield, you might see that. Some kind of 30 on in, or you say go well, ahead. And I'd go it. ahead and do it now because 519 left on the clock. Wake Forest has timeouts, but if you can pick up first downs and wear down the defense, that's where you're going to have an edge. The confusion there on the kickoff. First one for Wake Forest since well, in a bit. They go with here. Humphrey will see if he boots it deep, and if he does, how deep he will boot it. American Military University kickoff coming here. AMU, the number one provider of higher education to the U.S. military. Good leg in this one. From the four. And Peebles takes it out. Forrest, Jacob Johnson with the special teams tackle. Our key for Cardinal Gibbons, A, protect the football, and then no penalties. You've got to play clean football here, but I would put everything on your O-line, the guys up front, and run the football. That's where you've had success. You want to turn this clock and potentially make Wake Forest use their timeouts. So special teams was something that Reggie Lucas really focused on this week the bad snap otherwise we'd be tied at 10 here so now you matter that you're down a point you just have to get the football back if you're Wake. you've got to get a stop your defense has to make some plays if Wake Force is loading the box <laughs> there's 10 guys down there ready to stop the run Stone King from the 26 carrying tacklers got four to the 30 and Stone King slow to get up and for Wake Forest, of course, you go and try to get the football. But remember, the guys carrying the football with Ziegler and Stone King, they're playing on defense. They're tired as well. They're not normally carrying the football. So if I'm a Wake Forest defender, I'm going and attacking that ball and really focusing because you've got guys in that don't, maybe don't have the experience of normally carrying the ball, especially in critical situations. Second down out of this eye. Gets a couple. Cougars were there. Ziegler able to get two, maybe three yards. And now, Jay, this is going to be perhaps the yep. biggest down of the game. Well, I interesting here. I, I, I'm expecting Gibbons to line up like they're going to run the football, but I think they're going to throw. That's just my guess. I think they're going to go and try to pick this up through the air because Wake Forest is selling out to stop the run. Everybody is loaded up inside. I'd expect potentially a play action pass. Ten guys in the box. Third down, four. Stay on the ground. Ziegler and the Cougars are there. Oh, ball pops out. Did Williams jump on it? No, it's recovered by Gibbons. I think it was Stone King who pounced on the pumpkin there. They go ahead of the I formation. Ziegler carrying it. Lucas put his helmet right on the ball with Grant, bringing him down. They're almost able to get the turnover. Johnny on the spot was the dependable Stone King. 
as he smothered the pigskin. And now fourth and five. Wake's going to get it back with a good amount of time here. Wake Forest defense did the job, and they still have three timeouts. And Cardinal Gibbons burns one here. Two minutes, 52 seconds remaining. It's a one-point game between these two. Well, it's time now to take a look at our West Shore home player of the game. And it's Joshua Stone King. He's emerged in this game. Is of course, not only a defensive force, but right now he's got essentially what led to the game-winning extra point. Well, Stone King is a college prospect, and he's showing off tonight. The defensive side, he's been all over the field making plays. In the fourth quarter, the impact that he's had on the offense has been monumental. Convert your old bathtub into a modern and spacious walk-in shower in just one day with West Shore Home. It was so cool. Jacob Wirtz was talking to him before the game with West Shore. He was fired up about this game tonight. He was it's a big one. Real excited. Seen a great one here. And a snap that loop back there. But it's going to take a fortuitous bounce for the Crusaders. So that's going to be a 42-yarder after the roll following the kick. 26-yard line, though, started that last drive where they scored from the 27. So they've done this before. Uh, if you're Wake Forest, you're in this huddle, you're saying, hey, guys, listen, plenty of time. We've got timeouts. Let's make it happen. Let's use this clock up. Let's get some points on the board and win the ball game. Let's keep this in mind, too, Sonny. They don't have to score a touchdown. Got a strong special teams unit kicking the field goal as well. Already one tonight for Helford. Kaswila off the field for this play. Simmons. And Lucas darts out of bounds. Pick up a three. Lucas. Working the sideline, good throw by Simmons. Hits route, immediately gets out of bounds, smart play. Ford, progress might give him the 30 after we saw that replay, but they're going to say it was the 29. Gain of three. Good release by Simmons. Caught, out of bounds with it, Grant. Gibbons brings the blitz right up the middle, A-gap. Ziegler comes through, along with Raphael. Nice job by Simmons, staying strong, getting the ball out to his outlet. Grant getting over to the sidelines again to stop the clock. On my spot .nc .gov first down. That's what's impressive to me on this drive. The receivers have gotten out of bounds and preserved those timeouts. Well, in the execution, you can tell that they practice this during the week, two minutes row. Bobbled that one a little, unleashes it down the field. It's going to be incomplete. He wanted Tavon Williams. Nine to 15 now, throwing the football for Tavon Simmons. Four down territory for Wake Forest. spot here potentially for a screen if you see pressure coming. Simmons takes off. And he will head out of bounds at the 44. Stops the clock, however. Well, the key there is get what you can and immediately get over to the sideline. Simmons to pocket awareness and then the speed to get to the outside. Nice job over on the sideline by Corbin McCain. 
The Crusader in their defense pushed him out. 5,978 pounder, sophomore. Third and six. Simmons. Stone King with the sack. Stone King right up the middle, uses his arms, throws the man off of him, and he's just so relentless, making play after play. He's got a motor, doesn't he, Sonny? He does, and now it forces Wake Forest to use the timeout. In a tough situation on fourth down, got to go for it. Now one thing to consider here, Sonny, I mean, this is going to be fourth and 13, but Simmons has shown the ability to not only scramble, but also if given time, find a receiver downfield. You have to have a spy on him because you're right. I mean, when he's back there dancing around, he can take off and he can pick up 13 yards very easily. So over on the Cardinal Gibbons sideline, the conversation is do we blitz or do we drop back and play zone defense? And I think you play zone defense and let your defensive line who has gotten pressure, let them go to work. Sack back to the 13, courtesy of Stone King. He's got a couple of them tonight. Yeah, and Reggie Lucas and his team, you've got an athletic quarterback. Get him on the run. If he can't pick it up with his legs, go ahead. If not, look for Barrett and Lucas, the two big wide receivers. They're making a ton of noise on the given side. an eye on Stone King and Dozier as well. Simmons with four receivers in a back. Simmons. Stone King giving pursuit. Darts it down. Field off the hand of the receiver. Wanted Grant. The effort of Stone King is so impressive. Dozier breaking down the pocket. And look at 99, continue to hustle. Offense, defense, forces Simmons out. And then he's trying to make a play. Grant was almost able to come down with it. But now Gibbons gets the ball back. Wake Forest has two timeouts, so they may have an opportunity here to potentially get it back. But Gibbons sitting in the driver's seat. What a game here tonight between these two. That's going to be a penalty against Gibbons. How about that? Now first and 15. Ball at 41. And they have Smalls in there, and he will keep it himself. A big moment for the freshman, huh? Well, it's all about ball security now for Cardinal Gibbons. Injury time out on the field. And we have a player hurt. And it's going to be a cramping situation. Kyle Leary being attended to there, the 6'2", 226-pound senior. Well, let's take a look at the Harris Teeter scoring drive of the game for Cardinal Gibbons. Short field to work with. Through the air and then on the ground, Stone King pounding it in. Three plays, 44 yards, the 47 second drive and the 32 yard run for Joshua Stone King, also our player of the game. Harris Teeter, your Vic card saves on fuel, fuel, food, and more. Great student, great student athlete. Sonny, if you are a college recruiter out there, Stone King seems to check all the boxes. I mean, when you watch the film, you're seeing a guy play his heart out and making plays all over the field, so versatile. 
And you look at his strength, he's only going to get bigger. The speed is evident, the quickness on the defensive line. To me, he's going to be a great player at the college level down at the D-line. Well, it was interesting today on uh, the radio show I host. You were on it. Huge rating with you on the show today. But talk to Doug Martin, who coached New Mexico State, also coached uh, at Kent State. He's now kind of retired, fishing down in Emerald Isle, enjoying life down there. But he was talking about, you know, the NCAA right now has tabled that deal where you have that sort of unlimited transfer. You know, you can transfer as, up as many as four times. And here's the shame of that. We see a lot of great athletes in these games we do. We ask the coaches where they're being recruited. I mean, normally guys that would be can't miss, big prospect, right. maybe are not being recruited at the high level because of that transfer portal. Yeah, it, the transfer portal has really changed things a lot, and it's disappointing. My message to these guys are, wherever you go, make the most of your opportunity. And if, if you're out there playing at a high level, people are going to notice, whether that's an opportunity to transfer to another school or an opportunity to go to the NFL once you get older. But whatever your opportunity is, make the most of it. Aiden Small staying in there, the freshman. A victory would make Cardinal Gibbons 2-2, two and two, and it would be the first loss of the year for Wake Forest. They're going to take every second of the play clock down there. Smalls gets it over to his left. Lucas chasing him down, secures the football. Cougars are ripping at it, and they dropped him with 50 seconds remaining. And that will leave Wake Forest now with one timeout as they burn one here. All right, so this is going to be third down. You imagine they'll use the timeout after this next play if Cardinal Gibbons doesn't pick up the first down and potentially get the ball back after the punt. Around 35 seconds left. Well, and we saw they can work the sidelines and get yardage in good chunks of yardage by doing that. Now, it's going to be tough because you know Gibbons will be guarding that sideline, but I think you've got to be quick if you're the Cougars if you do yeah. get this football back. Well, if you, if you get the ball back, you know, you're going to have to throw some jump balls and take some shots, but the focus over on the sideline right now is we've got to get a stop on this next play, and we need to go after the football. Go after the ball at all costs but make sure we don't give up the first down. Well, it's been a huge environment here tonight. They had a kind of a festival and a band and great food and huge student and alumni turnout. This was an even homecoming, Sonny. Imagine what happens at homecoming. Yeah, it was a great tailgate. People got here a couple hours early. The fans have been awesome. Both sides, Cardinal Gibbons and Wake Forest, everybody showing up. I never disagree with you, but I'm going to disagree with you. They weren't here two hours. We got here two hours early. <laughs> they, I think they've been here since school let out today. Nobody left. <laughs> they all got here at 6 a.m. Yeah, they school got here. Have never left. <laughs> a lot of uh, good friends tonight on both sides from the community. This is a big, uh, big matchup. Great game here tonight. It's been a lot of fun. Leonard and Wake Forest only uh, about six seconds should elapse there. Now they should add some time back. They should add at least two, maybe three seconds back. Let's see what they do though. I mean, obviously they have no way to check it, but somebody's keeping the time you would think down there on the field, right? Well, for Cardinal Gibbons, fourth and eleven. You know, this isn't a normal punting situation. You want to get rid of this ball quickly. So you just want a little pooch kick to get it inside of the 20. And really, ideally, you want this ball to hit the ground and roll a little while and eat up some more clock. If you're the Cougars, obviously you're thinking return here. Because Swally has the ability to catch it and do something with it once he does grab it. So. Right now, if you're WF, you're trying to block this thing. I'm selling out. Get this ball off the foot. Again, for Cardinal Gibbons, the urgency to get rid of it quickly. There's not even a return man back deep for Wake Forest. They're going straight up block. See what happens here. Boy, this defensive group and special teams group 
They have played so hard tonight, really for both sides. But the Wake kids defensively have really, really hustled here this evening. They weren't going to kick it. They are going to go ahead and run it now. It's going to be a penalty and go back. Now, did Gibbons take a timeout there, or is it a penalty? No, they did they take the, the timeout. timeout before. I didn't think they did before the whistle, but apparently they did. Uh, so interesting. We'll see if they come back and punt this, or if they go out in regular formation, try to keep the ball on the ground and mitigate the risk. Great student turnout here tonight for Cardinal Gibbons. So if we ran this thing back in a couple months, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind it, would you? I bet you I bet you we'll see them play again. We'll go with Smalls here to take off. He's down. Clock will stop with 35 seconds remaining. Nice call there because it does eliminate the yeah. possibility of many things going wrong. You have given the Cougars, though, a little bit shorter field to work with than you might like. Well, the Cougars showed the ability to get out of bounds as well on the previous drive. So Cardinal Gibbons, I'm funneling everything to the inside. Toss, Grant out of bounds, and that is going to be a first down. And they use five seconds. Good job by Grant immediately getting over towards the sideline. Simmons knew exactly where he was going with the ball. Wafts it over the defender. Perfect placement. Simmons, six of nine throwing the ball here in the second half, and we now have a Gibbons player with Grant. That's Dozier, I believe. Dozier's pass rush. Meantime, kind of giving Wake Forest a little bit of a timeout here. An opportunity over to the sideline. Wake Forest right now isn't planning just for this play. They're talking about two plays here, making sure they use this opportunity to get everybody huddled up and go over the game plan on the drive. It gets out of bounds, obviously they can take their time, but if it's in bounds, they need to sprint immediately a line of scrimmage to get off the next play. So Jay, ball at the 46, probably need to get it comfortably to the 20, maybe 25. Can you do that, get it there in a play, maybe two, and still have time to get a kickoff with no timeout? I mean, potentially you, you could have three plays to get down. They just used five seconds. So if you run quick hitches, out routes, kind of go 10 yards a piece, you're going to have to have one explosive play. Yeah. You're going to have to have at least one, but you've got plenty of time if you can execute move the ball down the field. You don't have to start throwing bombs down the field. You can go ahead, be methodical, and trust that your guys can execute and get out of bounds. They're continuing to work on... Dozier here. And for Stone King, they need him for this last drive to pass rush. Dozier's out for at least one play. They need 99 to get pressure up the middle. Well, now, conversely, if you're Wake Forest, you kind of put some effort on Stone King. You really can't do that with Dozier in the game. You yeah. might could double him. Double team now have a running back chip him. You've got to slow him down. But if Simmons has a clean pocket, he can throw it or he can run around and then take off. If he sees a lane where he can get 10 yards, get out of bounds, that's an option as well. Now, be aware of that halfback pass option as well. But basically, it is what 
allowed him to get the score that led to what we thought would be the tying extra point. Simmons has it though. Steps up, throws, knocked away. He wanted Grant, and it's Chip Coleman skying in to break it up. Coleman had great recognition. He read the eyes of Simmons. He's going towards the right. Number six jumps right in front of the pass lane. That was a really good throw. It's better defense. 25 ticks remaining now. Second and 10. Unleashes. Oh, what a wow. catch by Grant. It'll be a first down. And they get it into Gibbons territory. Now 17 seconds remaining. Grant got rocked as well. Unbelievable catch. Simmons again staying patient. Moves up the pocket. Keeps his eyes up. And he skies for this one. That left foot. They got a break. Yeah, they got a break. Will they be able to take advantage? How many cracks at it here, Sonny, after the first down? If you get out of bounds, you have two more plays. If you don't get out of bounds, you may not have another opportunity. Going to get rid of it. Almost intercepted. Clock stops. Ten seconds remaining. Got to go to the end zone here, right? Yep. You, you could potentially run a hitch. Get about six or seven yards. Have four or five seconds left. But I think your best option is go to the end zone. Maybe you have enough time to have one more and doze your back in the ballgame. Well, that'll help with the pass rush. Crusaders trying to get to 500 after an 0-2 start. Cougars trying to remain undefeated here. Simmons. Darts out of bounds, three seconds to go. Smart decision. Simmons looking down the field. He was going towards the end zone. Didn't like it. Continued to roll out and then realized, hey, I can get a couple yards, get out of bounds, that one more play. Two ticks remaining. Oh, they're going to go for the field goal. going to be a 53-yarder for Helfrich. Cardinal Gibbons going to try to ice it. All right, if you're Wake Forest, does this change anything? No. You send Helfrich out there, you get the time that you can send him right back out. You have confidence that he can make this kick earlier on in the ball game. His last field goal would have been good for over 50. Again, Outstanding play by Simmons on that last one. Instead of just heaving it up in harm's way, realized he could get some extra yardage to help out the potential field goal. Got what he could, immediately goes out of bounds. You give your chance, your team a chance to win the ball game. Now keep in mind on the extra point, they had a bad snap. That's what from yeah. didn't allow them to try, permitted them from trying the tying PAT. Well, let's keep an eye on that operation here. Swally will be the holder. Who is the snapper? Let's see what Helbrick does here. 53 yards and an angle. Blocked! Given. Gets the win at home over Wake Forest, 10-9. A slugfest here between these two championship programs. Stone King and company move to two and two, and they defeat the Cougars for a second straight year and send Lake Forest to three and one. Two of the best teams in the state, two outstanding performances on defense, comes down to the last play of the ball game, and special teams comes up with the play. 
right up the middle, the sophomore, Corbin McDaniel, knocking the ball down. Yep. Number 22. Daniel plays that Crusader spot for Cardinal Gibbons. And they will knock off the Cougars here tonight. We'll take a timeout, come back, and have the presentation of our Friday Night Rivals trophy and a word with the victorious Crusaders. Stellar matchup here tonight between these two, and the game really lived up to everything we thought it would. 10-9, Gibbons over Wake Forest. And let's go now to Alexa Kay. She has the victorious Crusaders. Hey, guys. Thank you so much, Coach, for joining us, and congratulations. Yeah! Yeah! Huge defensive battle tonight. Number 99 really stuck up. here. How did you guys win? How was your win tonight, and how much does it mean to you? Well, it's just so proud. Obviously, anytime you can get a win, it's big. Um, you know, Wake Forest is a quality opponent, and uh, it took every bit of it tonight, you know, for us to get it done. So proud of all three phases, and uh, just excited to get the win. But these guys persevered, and we've been working on that, and uh, excited to see it pay off here. Well, congratulations. What are you taking away from tonight's game and into practice next week? Got to get better. Hey, but 1-0 and on the week, and we move on to the next. So, excited. Absolutely. Well, congratulations, guys. Here you go. <laughs> Happy bunch of Crusaders there. Cardinal Gibbons getting our FNR trophy here tonight. What a great win for Gibbons. Tough loss for Wake Forest. Well, great competition from both teams. I expect each side to make deep playoff runs. We may see one of these teams in the state championship again. Congratulations to Cardinal Gibbons, Stephen Wright, and his crew found a way to finish off the ball game and get a big win. All of us would like to take a moment to thank the wonderful folks at West Shore Home. Air Experts Heating and Cooling. Talk it out in C and Tatum and Atkinson. They make these games possible for viewers at home. We'd also like to thank our other great supporters for their contributions to our Friday Night Rivals telecast. MySpot.NC.gov, Crabtree Mall, United States Marine Corps, Campbell University, Harris Teeter, the NCDPS, and American Military University. And we'd especially like to thank tonight's participating high schools and their administrators for their support. Wake Forest High School and our host, Cardinal Gibbons. Wonderful job by our crew tonight. Well, tune in next Friday. The South Garner Titans take on the Garner Trojans, and we'll have it for you. Friday Night Rivals for Jay Sonauter and Alexis K. I'm Patrick Johnson. So long from Raleigh. Gibbons, the one-point win over Wake. Ever since my boots first hit these streets, had to scratch a claw, made me hard to beat. They were real early mornings and late, late nights.